Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 money moves that you absolutely need to be doing in your 20s. Your 20s can be a really defining moment in your life. For a lot of people, your 20s may be whenever you're starting your first professional job, you're buying a car or a house, and you might be getting married and starting a family. So there's a lot of room for error here, but there's also a lot of room for making key financial decisions that will benefit you for the rest of your life. That being said, this advice can be applied no matter what stage you're at in life. The best time to start is always today. So let's jump into this list. The number one thing you need to be doing in your 20s is you need to start investing. I know starting to invest your money may seem like an extremely daunting task, but it's so, so important to start in your 20s. If you really want to build your wealth in the long run, savings just aren't going to cut it. Consider this graph. If you have $1,000 and you put it into three different accounts, Look at how much more your money will grow when it's invested compared to a checkings or a savings account. With a checkings or a savings account, you're actually losing money to inflation. But by investing this money, on average, you're gaining 7% every year. And I think it's pretty clear here that the growth that you're going to see with your money is definitely worth that upfront research to get this started. Getting your investment strategy up and running is not as hard as it seems. And I promise that you can figure out most of the stuff that really matters within a weekend. You may think that investing is something that's going to be super hands-on, but it actually can be a really automatic process. It doesn't need to be as complicated as trying to pick out individual stocks and selling them off and buying different ones and trying to time the market. In fact, I'd encourage you not to pick individual stocks. Investing in low cost index funds that track the S&P 500 or the total US stock market are going to get you so much further than trying to time the market and buying into those individual stocks. And this is great because this is so simple to set up. All you have to do is set up automatic investments through a great company like Vanguard or Fidelity, where you're automatically sending your money into index funds like these ones and just not touching it. I have a video about how to buy VTSAX and Vanguard, which is an index fund that tracks the total US stock market and has really low fees. So if you're looking for a place to get started, I'd encourage you to check out that video. If you're still feeling intimidated, I promise that you can do this yourself. You don't need to pay someone to manage your money for you. Investing your money can be a really simple process and it's crucial to start as soon as possible. The second money move that you absolutely need to make in your 20s is to resist lifestyle inflation. Now, what exactly is lifestyle inflation? Well, throughout your life, you can probably expect your salary to be going up over time. Lifestyle inflation refers to inflating your expenses over time as well. You need to learn how to keep your expenses low even when your salary is going up. When you're in college, you're probably more used to living a pretty scrappy lifestyle. I know for me personally, I picked the cheapest apartment I could find and didn't spend any money on decorations, rarely went out to eat or bought new clothes. But when I started working my first professional job, I decided that I wanted a nicer apartment, I wanted a professional wardrobe, and I started going out a little bit more. But once you start introducing these new luxuries into your your life, you're going to start thinking of them as necessities. So for example, you might want to treat yourself to a nice apartment with a washer and dryer, and that feels so special for you the first time that you have an apartment with that. But then whenever it's time to find a new apartment in a year or two, you're definitely going to look for apartments that already have a washer and dryer. And this is now a necessity for you. How could you go back to not having one? That's why it's important to hold on to that frugal lifestyle for as long as you can while you're young. And I'm not saying that you absolutely can't increase your expenses every year. This is a pretty natural thing for people to do, but be mindful about the luxuries that you're bringing into your life. Trust me, it's a lot harder to go back to that scrappy lifestyle than to have never left it in the first place. Number three, the next thing that you should definitely be doing in your 20s is to start contributing to your retirement accounts. In your 20s, it may seem like a silly time to start thinking about retirement, but this is exactly the time when you should be starting because your money matters so much more now because you have time on your side. If you work a little harder to save a few extra bucks to put into a retirement account, 
now, it will pay you off tenfold down the line. Some of the most popular retirement accounts to start with are the Roth IRA and the 401k. For your Roth IRA, you can open that up on your own and the 401k is usually offered by an employer. If you haven't started investing in retirement, I would definitely look into these accounts and see if you can start putting money into them. As with most items on these lists, your future self will thank you for this. Number four, another thing you definitely should be doing in your 20s is to build your credit. Your credit score is a three digit number that lenders use to decide whether or not they should give you money, depending on whether or not they think that you're going to pay back their loan on time. And this is a really important factor in your financial life. The higher your score is, the more likely you're going to qualify for loans and credit cards at really favorable terms, which will definitely save you money in the long run. So how exactly do you build your credit? Well, a lot of you might already have student loans and paying those off can help build your credit. Credit cards can also be a great way to build up this score but you absolutely must be careful with them. If you use your credit card to buy things that you can't afford, you're going to bury yourself in a hole that will be really hard to get out of. Credit cards also have some of the highest interest rates out there, so it's going to be much harder to pay back this money. So a good rule of thumb is to treat your credit card like a debit card. If you don't have money on the bank to pay it off, then do not put it on your credit card. But if you are responsible with your credit cards and you're paying off that bill every single month, in full, you're really going to build up your credit. So by having a higher credit score, you're going to be approved for mortgages at a lower interest rate and other things like car loans at a lower interest rate. And this will definitely save you money in the long run. Number five, pay off your debt. This one goes without saying, but debt can definitely hang over your head in your 20s, especially for people coming out of school with student loans. So it's easier said than done, but I'd recommend throwing everything you have at your debt to try and get it paid off. Because once you pay off your debt, that money can be going towards your savings account, your retirement accounts, and you can be investing that money instead of sinking it away into repaying debt. Dave Ramsey, who is a famous financial advisor, recommends that you start paying off your debt using the snowball method. In this method, you would start paying off your debt by the smallest loan in terms of amount. So if you had three separate loans, one of $1,000, one of $2,000, and one of $3,000, he recommends definitely starting with the $1,000 one so that you can gain that momentum and have that debt payoff mindset. I definitely wouldn't recommend this method because it doesn't take into account interest rates. Instead, I would definitely recommend using the avalanche method, which means paying off the debt with the highest interest rate. And if you do the math, this one always will win out. So if you have those loans of $1,000, $2,000, and $3,000, and the $2,000 one has a 7% interest rate and the other two have a 5% interest rate, I would definitely recommend paying off the 7% interest rate before you worry about the other ones. That way that 7% rate isn't going to bury you in further debt while you're trying to pay off a smaller amount that really isn't as important. When I graduated college, I threw absolutely everything I had at my debt and I was able to pay it off in under a year. I know that it's not a fun feeling having that debt hanging over your head, but I promise you it's going to feel amazing when you come out on the other side. So just keep going. The next important money move that you should be making in your 20s is to build up an emergency fund. Building up an emergency fund or a safety net is incredibly important. They are for exactly what their name implies, emergencies. So that could be a costly, unbudgeted car repair. You could lose your job or undergo some unforeseen medical conditions. So having money set aside to tap into when something like this comes about is paramount. 2020 has proven that an emergency fund is such a necessity. We went from having some of the best economic runs in history to a steep and swift economic downturn. Without an emergency fund, you would be forced to sell off your investments in the market and undergo a huge loss if you needed that money. I'd recommend starting your emergency fund at $1,000 and building it up over time. An emergency fund ideally should be enough to cover three to six months worth of living expenses. These funds should be stored in a safe place that are shielded from market fluctuations 
such as a savings account or a checking account. Your fund should also have liquidity to it meaning that you should be able to access it when you need it pretty easily. If you need more information about emergency funds or how to use your Roth IRA as an emergency fund tool, then I have a video about that and you can check that out in the description below. The next money move that you should be making in your 20s is to automate all of your finances. This means when you get that direct deposit at the beginning of the month or middle of the month or whenever, you're automatically sending that money into paying off your credit cards, investing, and saving. And all of this can be set up in a weekend. So when you get that direct deposit, you should have your account set up that you're automatically sending some money into savings, you're sending some into your retirement accounts, your brokerage account, and also to pay off any credit cards you might have. It's important to do this because you're automatically paying off those credit cards and not tanking your credit score but it's also important because you're paying yourself first whenever you automate your expenses. When you get paid, this money should automatically be going into your retirement accounts and your savings. That way you don't even see this money in your checking account and you're not as tempted to spend it. It's also beneficial to automate your expenses because you're just simplifying your life. You don't have to think about savings and retirement. If you sit down and automate all of your accounts, it'll probably just take you a day. And by sitting down to do this a day, you're freeing yourself up for worrying about these for months. You're automatically investing in savings and retirement, and you're hitting those financial goals that you have predetermined for yourself. The next money move that you should be making, and I believe we're on number eight now, is to start budgeting. I'm a pretty frugal person, so I really haven't felt the need to budget in the past before, but budgeting can be so much more than just helping to lower your expenses every month. It's definitely important to see where your money is going in order to cut out things that are really eating into your savings. But it's also really just important to see your annual income compared with your annual expenses in order to forecast your financial success in the future. If you know what you're making compared to what you're spending, you'll probably be able to predict where you'll stand financially in 20 years or so. I've never really felt the need to actually spreadsheet out my budget for the month or the year, but I found that my favorite way of budgeting is through apps. And I've tried a bunch of different budgeting apps. I've tried Mint, Nerd Wallet, Every Dollar, but by far my favorite budgeting app has been Personal Capital. I find with Personal Capital, you can really see the larger picture whenever it comes to your finances. It actually maps out your wealth growing in the long term. And I find that really motivating and it focuses on the larger picture rather than the short term expenses. All you need to do is link your accounts, like your credit card accounts, your retirement accounts, your savings and checking account and personal capital will do all of the hard work for you. You'll be able to set a budget every month and personal capital will automatically calculate your expenses and let you know whether or not you're sticking to that budget. So for example, if I buy a shirt at TJ Maxx, personal capital will see that transaction because I have that credit card account linked and it will automatically deduct that from my budget. And they'll also break down your individual spending categories so you can see how much you spend on groceries, entertainment, and say automotive care. So you'll clearly be able to see what areas are eating into your budget. And they'll even give you investing tips based on your age and some information that you give them. And perhaps the coolest feature is the retirement planner, which allows you to see how your wealth is going to build in the long run. So I'm a big fan of personal capital it's free to use but other budgeting apps are great too and if you want to spreadsheet your own budget even better number nine on this list don't sink your money into a brand new car in your 20s and the number one reason for this is cars are a depreciating asset meaning that they will lose value over time and newer cars in particular depreciate at a much faster rate than used cars in fact a new car loses about 20 percent of its value in its first year of ownership buying a new car can really lock you into expensive monthly payments which can severely eat into your budget and your ability to invest and if you think you need an expensive luxurious car to keep up with everyone else Take a look at this study. According to Forbes, 61% of wealthy people earning over $250,000 a year 
I actually drive Hondas, Toyotas, and Fords. And while we'd expect that they would be driving these luxurious cars, they too understand that buying a new car easily eats into your budget. So I definitely recommend buy your car based on its reliability and not its brand name. I definitely recommend buying a car that at least lasts you 10 years and try your best not to sell it within seven years because you're going to lose a lot of value that way. Just remember that looks fade and the novelty of your new luxurious car will wear off, but your car payments will not go away. And the last tip I have for you, number 10 on the list is to create financial goals for yourself in your 20s. It's very easy to drift through life, go through the motions, and suddenly in 40 years, you wake up and you wish you could have done some things differently. Setting goals helps in two ways. Firstly, by setting goals about where you wanna be in life, it allows you to work backwards and create little milestones that'll help you reach that goal. And the second great element of writing out your goals is it creates personal accountability towards those goals. It's often easy to have a lofty idea of what to expect in the future without ever taking the time to rationalize it. So I really encourage you to write out the financial goals that you want to achieve in life. Write out your savings goals, write out where you want to be in 10 years, and create those little goals that'll help you get there. And whenever you do establish these goals, they're going to be in the back of your mind. So next time you're trying to justify an expense to yourself, you're going to have that goal and decide whether or not that expense is really worth it. And that concludes the list of the 10 money moves that you should definitely be making in your 20s. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the contents of today's video and you found it a little bit useful. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.